can and must do better. We've made mistakes, and we've learned, and we are still learning. It was another emotion-packed day at the Boeing 737 MAX hearing in Washington, D.C. Good evening, everybody. I'm Joyce Taylor. I'm Greg Copeland, in for Mark Wright. This time, even Boeing's CEO began to choke up as he recounted meeting with the families of those killed. King 5 Aviation Specialist Glenn Farley is back live in Washington, D.C. tonight. Glenn, how does this compare to yesterday's hearing in the Senate? Uh, it, it was very different. We were kind of worried it was going to be sort of the same hearing recycled. It wasn't. It was less controversial. Uh, it was less uh, combative, you could say. That doesn't mean that it was without fireworks. It's a second day of hearings, and the families of those lost to crashes aboard two new 737 MAX jets remain, a testament to the human cost of airline disasters. The background for another appearance by Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg, this time before the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, the committee headed by Oregon Democrat Peter DeFazio. I mean, do you think in retrospect it was a mistake to not inform pilots of the existence of the MCAS system? We made some mistakes on MCAS, and as we've, uh, as we've gone back and taken a look at this, the focus on MCAS, the flight control feature which forced the nose of the planes down, relying on just one faulty sensor on both jets, even though each plane has two. Washington Representative Rick Larson heads the Aviation Subcommittee. He has Boeing's giant Everett plant in his district, the factory that makes the company's other jetliners, but he says reforms are needed. You deserve answers, and you rightfully expect Congress to act. And Mullenberg becoming emotional when asked about his meetings with families late yesterday. We wanted to uh, we wanted to listen, and uh, um, each of the families uh, told us the stories about the lives that were lost, and uh, those were heartbreaking. Um, I'll never forget that. He is not the human being to be doing this job. But during a break, some of the families were having none of it. You sound completely unsatisfied. Yeah, yes, I'm very unsatisfied. I want him to resign. I want his team to resign. I don't think that they did well by us and by the Indonesian passengers. And, and, and they shouldn't keep making decisions. They're unfit. Nadia Millerin's daughter, Samia, died in the March crash of Ethiopian Flight 302. Samia is also the niece of decades-long consumer watchdog, Ralph Nader. And Congress is responsible completely. Congress has cut the FAA budget. They've cut the FAA authority. They have allowed Boeing to regulate the FAA instead of the reverse. Now, the FAA is very much the focus of this committee because they expect to bring the FAA before it next. That date has not been set yet, but that is where this is going. And this whole business with the 737 MAX here on the Hill, as I said, not over yet. Live in Washington, D.C., Glenn Farley, King 5 News. Glenn, obviously there's a lot going on there in D.C. right now. What are you working on for 630? So you remember Rick Larson, who is uh, represents uh, the area, including Everett, where Boeing's biggest factory is. He's also the head of the Aviation Subcommittee. We're going to sit down for a more in-depth interview with him tonight on King 5 News at 630. Looking forward to that, Glenn. We'll talk with you later tonight. Thank you.